bro, do you want this or not? Two years ago, Netflix released a movie called Tall Girl. It was about the trials and tribulations of being a tall girl and trying to find love. I decided that it was my duty to speak on it. And now it's two years later and they've released Tall Girl 2. And for the record, I'm 5'8", I'm not that tall. I'm a bit above average height and probably a little bit more above average height for Asian females. And so much has changed since my first tall girl video two years ago. I have been in multiple relationships, so I know all the trials and tribulations of a tall girl going through romance. Forever. I've always had a crush on her, but society has deemed it socially unacceptable for a tall girl to date a <laughs> By the way, I just have to reference this again. She's like 6'1". <laughs> I would never bully anyone for their insecurities, but I just don't understand making an entire movie about it. And this whole thing of it's socially unacceptable and something that society deems as like a taboo thing to date someone shorter than you. That's a very odd sweatshirt. Seriously? And oddly enough, I feel like it wouldn't be in dress coat. Even though it's a hoodie, it's weirdly exposing. And ugly. Oh no. Hi. Oh no, Netflix. They're doing it again. They are doing it again. They have had so many movies, especially romantic teen movies, where they make the second lead in the second movie, like, mixed or some sort of person of color, like, racially ambiguous sometimes, just to make sure that the lead does not end up with them at the end. And it's very- it's becoming a pattern, it's becoming an issue, because they did it with To All The Boys I Love Before, and they did it with the kissing booth and i'm sure they're gonna do it with a lot of other things i'm scared for my life like actually because like once is like okay twice i'm scared three times the killer is escaping and the killer is the netflix producers because they just keep doing this like why do they think this formula is what's making people watch these movies the formula is that they're bad keep doing it though and what would you say to people who don't think that being tall is a real problem? <laughs> Why is this like an interview? I don't even know what I would say to that. I would actually be like, go fuck off. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like... <laughs> Imagine... Imagine if she was like... <laughs> what if this, this audition lady goes, What do you say to people that say that being tall isn't a real issue? And what if, what if Jody came out of nowhere and just said, what do you say to people that say that being Asian is not a real issue? <laughs> you tell me that. Doesn't make all the bad things that have happened to me every day my entire life any less real. Performing has always been my dream, but I didn't think I could do it until now. Okay. What a weird, stupid question. Debt, like, honestly, like, that has nothing to do with the audition. Like, it has nothing to do. Like, we're not signing up to be Miss Universe. And if we were, she would be a shoo in because she's so freaking tall. And this question should have been a prompt in the first movie. This question should have been an entire prompt in the first movie. I don't know why, it's just coming back to here. And I don't like it that she answers it so well because I feel like it would have been a better prompt to give her 
in the first movie because she was so like so woe was me about everything so it makes no sense to give it to her now in the second movie when she's got the boyfriend she's got friends she's popular everyone likes her and she's finally doing something that she's always wanted to do but couldn't because of her height why are we asking that now miata lady why are we asking that now it doesn't matter and why do people like this speech so much you think you can actually pull this off if someone asks me what intrusive thoughts are, I'm showing them this scene because that's what intrusive thoughts are. They have a little evil giggle to them. <laughs> they have a little evil villain laugh. They have a Joker laugh. I'm the Joker. <laughs> that's what my intrusive thoughts sound like. My intrusive thoughts are not just me talking. It's me talking in a Joker impression. You think you can pull this off? <laughs> You'll never survive. <laughs> Oh, that's like making me fucking tear up. It's kind of hard to do. Giving prompts to Jared Leto on this day. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Sounds like a him problem. I'm know. confused. I'm very confused by the zipper open shoulder, the zipper peekaboo shoulder. I just feel like I'm all for showing off your shoulders. I think that's everything. But I don't think a zipper peekaboo shoulder is the way to go. It looks like the it looks like a vagina on her shoulder, and he looks like little Huddy. They should have recasted him as little Huddy, and no one would have noticed. No one would have noticed if they recasted Dunk as little Huddy. And that she should be Addison Ray. We, sh I think they should have recasted the main couple as Little Huddy and Addison Ray, and and it still should have been a storyline of her being tall, but with Addison Ray, even though Addison Ray is like a very average height. She gives five six energy for sure, and I would like the whole movie to continue on with her complaining about being tall, or accepting her tallness while not being tall at all, because that's kind of like me watching this movie. That's that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm bullying other people for being tall, accepting my own tallness while not being tall at all. It's very complex to me. You must have something better to do than sit around and wait for me. Yeah, <laughs> I do. So not only is he short, he's also codependent. Short men always suck in the life out of you. That's actually so real. <laughs> That's the realest thing about tall girl. Short men do suck the life out of you. But what's funny is that in real life, it's not funny. It's just a fact. It's, yeah, it's not funny at all. Stupid. Me when my intrusive thoughts come out. Um, she's from Dance Mom, so she's actually very tall in real life. And I think most of the trauma she got from being tall is freaking from Abby Lee Miller. So maybe this should not be a movie. It should be a documentary. And it should be throwing Abby Lee Miller back into jail. Because there won't be a four-month anniversary. Jody. Jody. I wish Tall Girl 2 was actually a musical. I wish Tall Girl 2 was actually a musical because that would have been a great scene if it broke out into a song. And this is why I need to be on the writer's team because I feel like I'm creating something that has a lot more oomph and a lot more character. Because right now, I don't remember any of the characters from the last movie. I don't remember the other plot lines. I don't remember that guy kissing her. And I don't really care about their relationship issues. I want to see her getting made fun of for being tall again. How did I get so lucky? Oh. You know when people talk about icks, that was an ick. Like if I ever saw a man do that to me, like that would actually be a, I would actually break up. Why would the star of the spring musical have any time for little old dunks anymore? Am I a burden to you? Cause no. that's what it feels like. This is very icky. Like it's actually so icky because like, you know what, maybe, maybe tall girls do have issues because why have all, all exes acted like that? Am I a burden to you? No, I have a life and you don't. Like it's actually as simple as that. I have a life and I have things that I need to get done and you don't. Maybe if you built up your own life, you wouldn't feel like a burden to mine. Exactly, exactly. Like maybe it's a tall girl struggle or maybe it's just a girl struggle. Like he committed to his life to being her bitch. <laughs> he likes being submissive to her and just doing what she says. And now he's mad that she's Miss Popular and living her life. I've actually lost my appetite. So I'm gonna go. 
that actually is t quite rude like i know i was bagging on him but it actually is so freaking rude to just like be sitting there and be like yeah i'm gonna leave like yeah i know you put a lot of effort into this and i know you lit each of these candles individually but like i'm gonna dip i could see how he could feel a little underappreciated because she didn't even have like any sort of like thanks for like this whole thing like she could have been like thanks for this but like i have to go like it's an emergency like my dog died again oh, great great that was a mess. Why did I do that? that was that was actually a mess. You would make a horrible therapist. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Steve is becoming my favorite character. He just caused that, and that was great. His mom died. I'm calling it. His mom freaking died, or they have to send Stieg back to Sweden. You know what? I think I kind of blew my chance at being friends with you too. Hey, did you jerk? Of course not, Dunkers. I love you. I'm kind of loving the Dunky Steak friendship bag because they're kind of cute. Like I kind of liked them in the first one when they rode bikes together. It was kind of cute. <gasps> That's actually okay. Like I'm, I'm actually head cannoning that. <laughs> I am headcanoning that romantic story that I know is fully based off of my love for fan fiction when I was younger and that this is where it's stemming from like that's the root of it. Foreign exchange student comes in, you're an only child and you're only, you're a boy and you're an only child and then a foreign exchange student comes in and you guys fall in love. And you hate them at first because this is my house and my mom decided to take in a foreign exchange student without letting me know. And he's weird and he doesn't respect my space. And then I make out with him. And it's like a fan fiction come to life for real. Good one. That was a really good one. Thank you. Yeah. You, you were overweight? Oh yeah, way over. Got the weight off eventually. But I still felt the same way inside. For me, it's movie theaters. Mm. I have had so much stuff thrown at my head because I'm blocking the screen. What is this? They like the PTSD from movie theaters. Like she is like like I okay, to me I don't think they're comparable because first of all, everyone gets bullied in middle school. Uh, this is not me invalidating his experience. But it is very weird to be like Oh yeah, we experience the same thing because being tall and being overweight are two com they are treated completely different in society. Like completely different. Like being discriminated based on height is not a real thing. Like but being discriminated based on your weight is like very much a thing. Like it is very much a thing that exists that like people do all the time. So I feel like it's kind of insulting to compare the two situations cuz it's not the same. Because being tall and skinny is literally the beauty standard. Like, obviously, just because something is the beauty standard doesn't mean that you can't be made fun of for it. I could literally make fun of anyone for anything. Like, I can make fun of you for having a cute little tiny petite nose. Like, I could find a way to make fun of that. Like, you guys can make fun of me for having long hair or soft, supple skin or a tiny, tiny face. Like, you guys could make fun of me for that <laughs> if you wanted to. Like... Or my voluptuous lips and my big bottom. Like, you guys can make fun of me for that. Like, you can literally, like, I know I... <laughs> you can be made fun of for things that are in the beauty standard. I've experienced it my whole life. I, like, I get it. But <laughs> she just sounds ridiculous talking to people. Like, people used to throw popcorn at my head. Well, then scrouch down, scrunch down, or sit in the back row. Like, give me a break. Like, actually give me a break. The examples that they're using in this movie just don't, they don't hit hard like they're trying to make them to be. And it's, it's frustrating that they're comparing it to being overweight because in society, those are treated completely different and it's actually insulting. Okay, La La Land. Dancing under the moon night. It's very cute. The lighting is horrible though. I hate bright lighting behind them like that. Like it actually makes me so frustrated because I feel like it looks so bad. Like it's just so distracting in my opinion and I hate it. And I wish they stuck to green tones instead of this weird pink tone. If you're not moved by singing cats, you have no soul. 
they are becoming my favorite characters because oh, they're okay. actually having a personality. She's having troubles with her designer vagina shirts and he's has stage fright. Main couple. Main couple, let's go. Let's go. They're kind of cute and I'm I'm very much into Stig. Like he's actually becoming so much more charming than he was in the last movie. Was our entire relationship just some big joke? What? I make you smoothies every day, Jody. <laughs> I, know. I stand on crates for you, no. Jody. You're a monster. I, I know. I know. I I'm the worst. I'm that was funny. That was a good scene. I like that. I like Sabrina Carpenter. I think she did a really good job. I make smoothies for you. That's what, like, that's funny. I liked her delivery in that. I feel like last movie, I couldn't really see what type of character she was. And now I feel like she's giving me a little bit of, like, Haley Dumphy from Modern Family. And I really like that type of character for her. But it also has that kind of throwback to her character in Girl Meets World, where it was kind of like this, like, Sam Puckett-esque character. That was a really good scene. I'll give the movie props where it deserves props. And I thought that was funny. So, I wish <gasps> Harper and Stig should get together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's boring. Friends. Boo! That's actually so boring. Kimmy! That's so actually so boring that he's like, fine, you should get back. You should get back with them. Like, that's actually so stupid. Like, fight for your woman and be a homewrecker. This kind of reminds me of Glee. Just because everyone is getting with everyone. Like, they're... <laughs> Everybody is ran through on this show and everyone is getting with everyone for that matter is gonna want anything to do with me So I just I hope she jumps out of the car. That'd okay? be kind of funny. Richie, pull What's over. happening? She's having a panic attack. I swear to God, I'm gonna have a panic attack. I'm so sorry that I'm the screwed up daughter. I don't oh, no. Stop that. You're perfect as you are. I'm kind of liking this movie. I don't know. I feel like it's a wonderful like I don't know, we're seeing all these characters go through, like, f what it means to fail to them in their own ways. You have Jody, who's scared about, you know, failing this play and everyone watching her fail. You have Frida and her failing with her fashion design. You have Stig failing with, you know, musical, how he never, he never manages to book and all, like, he never manages to get casted and he's scared of singing. You have Uncle Min and the sister who are worried about failing by getting back with their exes and I feel like and you have Harper the sister who's scared about her interview and failing her interview I feel like this is all like good like uh good this is like a good cohesive story and it's kind of like these multiple paths of failure I'm, I think it's kind of cute you go back to being just the tall girl <laughs> nice Bring back tall girl. Bring back the tall girl. I miss her. Never control me. I control you. She's kind of in like a green goblin era. <laughs> That's a neat trick you got there. Norman's on sabbatical, honey. Breathe. No one. Okay, out of every makeup makeup artist on set, they didn't decide to blend her eyeshadow. There are so many makeup artists, like, you didn't decide to blend her eyeshadow? You could have done so many, you, you've you done so many different things and you couldn't do that? Like, that's actually so annoying. Like, I hate it when I'm watching stuff and they purposely decide to be bad. It's like, and I hate it when people are like, it's just trying to be realistic. Like, her hair looks bad because it's like, not every, not every teenager can look prim and proper all the time. It's like, I'm watching a movie. Don't distract me with ugliness. <laughs> Don't be ugly and distract me. Blend the eyeshadow. Like, it's a distract. It's distracting. It's not realistic. Blend that bright blue eyeshadow. It's fine. It's actually fine. And talk with and walk with. And walk with. Her being on stage and being taller than everyone else is actually the best because it makes her stand out so much more i want them on euphoria i want them in lexi's play i can do this i'm good enough to do this 
Okay, but that's actually really cute because like truly the only way that you can silence an inner critic is by showing yourself compassion and by continuing to practice self-compassion daily. The reason I ever told you I was into photography is because I thought it sounded cool. I mean, this, this could be your thing. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. If someone said that to me, like I show them I could do something and they're like, this could be your thing. Like you literally ha do nothing else. Like this could be it. <laughs> like... Look, I don't really know what I want to do with my life. But I know I, know I want you in it. it. Yes! I love you, Jody. Oh my god. Uh, and, you, and you're not saying it back, which is... <laughs> oh, he's actually such a piece of shit. We need more movies where it shows that she's not saying it back. I love you too. More representation of people not saying they love someone back when they tell them for the first time. Stop. You're so sweet. <laughs> She just doesn't talk to them. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. <coughs> Me when I go to my own party and just don't talk to anyone. Okay, the movie's over and I'm gonna say this. The Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. I've talked about ExpressVPN before and I'm here to talk about ExpressVPN again. I've been using ExpressVPN for a long time now. I've been using it for about a little over, maybe like two and a half years. And I cannot imagine going back to using the internet without ExpressVPN. Basically, ExpressVPN creates this little encryption on your data that you're typing into your computer and it's going into the servers, it's going to your ISPs, and it's going all these different places. It cr basically creates an encryption. Basically, if you don't have ExpressVPN, it's like if someone was writing a log of everything you're doing throughout the day. It would be very weird and be very unsettling if someone was doing that to every single one of your movements. So why let your internet service provider do that to you online? And if you're connecting to public Wi-Fi servers on your laptop, you're working in public at uh, a restaurant or a cafe or anything of the sort, a library, if you're connecting to that public Wi-Fi, you are putting yourself at risk to be hacked, to have your data stolen and much more. This can happen when you're at home as well, but it is a bigger, bigger risk if you are in public. ExpressVPN makes it so there's a nice little envelope around your data when it's being sent out. When you use ExpressVPN, you can actually change your location. And when you change your location, you can open up a wide variety of content from all different types of countries. This also works if you're gonna wanna check out some Studio Ghibli films. They have tons of Studio Ghibli films. If you switch on over to the UK. This also works right here on YouTube. If you come across a video that says not available in your country, you can change your region and get access to that video. It's as simple as that. It's two clicks away. It's super fast. And it's just, I just don't know why anyone wouldn't use ExpressVPN because I've used it for so long. I've grown accustomed to this, to this lifestyle and I feel like everyone deserves to have it in their lives. So find out how you can get three months free of ExpressVPN by going to expressvpn.com slash trend level or by clicking the link in the top of the description box. Thank you, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring today's video. This is actually a very cute movie. I think it deals with a little bit more serious topics or like, I don't know. Why I see serious is because, first of all, I'm a 19-year-old. I'm a 19-year-old girl watching this. Of course, it would seem like a very stupid, like, cheesy movie to me. And it's like, kind of seems like a PSA for anxiety. But I feel like if younger audiences are watching this and they're enjoying it and they're consuming it, I think it can actually be a really cute message. I think Tall Girl 2, and I'm going to say this, and this might be me just reading too much into it, but I think it has become a victim of the grown ass adults and grown ass freaking men watch a movie made for literal children and then get mad that it's not a prime oscar contender like that's what i'm getting from like the kind of uh circulation around this movie like yeah i get it, it's kind of a joke but this movie is like kind of cute and it's not the worst thing i've ever seen and it kind of has a cute message and it kind of deals with topics that i feel like is great if young people are watching granted it all started because she thought that she was like actually oppressed for being tall but we got somewhere to where the second movie actually had something that i think was positive and i think that's great and i think it's like cute and it's like romantic and it's like you know because in my opinion as long as it's not harmful
people and as long as it's not spreading harmful information which I think the first movie did kind of spread harmful information and kind of did spread an un- a harmful narrative that being tall was like super like it was like a super big issue dealt with in society and kind of very much uh was tone deaf I think that the first movie definitely had that so I think that if it's like made for young people and it's not spreading harmful misinformation or harmful narratives I think it's fine this is not a perfect movie it has its own issues but at the end of the day it's a PG movie that's not made for me and I say slay if it's a slay or nay I give it a slay honestly honestly